Okie dokie. Let's talk a little bit more about value. Now you currently have your value scale. The next thing we're going to do is talk about pens and how to use them to create uh, a range of values as well. Uh, you'll notice that your uh, pens have numbers on the end, right? I don't know if this is, oh, that's maybe more right side up. Um, they, you probably have something like, this is my, my smallest one is a 003 because it's a 0 .003, right? And then I have a 0 .01, 0 .03, and a 0 .08. These are all fairly fine tipped pens and they make different weight lines. So let's see what happens when we use them. This is my 0, 0, 003. If I make a basic line with that, it's fairly thin. I have this sort of normal pressure. I could go slightly lighter pressure and I could go slower and it might be a slightly darker, slightly thicker uh, pen stroke. Depends on how wide and how much it bleeds and what paper you're on. Zero, 01. Let's do this. Zero, 01. Same thing. Just sort of do a normal line and then see if you can do a lighter line and see if you can do a slightly heavier line. Don't press down so hard that you uh, hurt the tip. These tips are very fine. Not that you can see that. It does not want to refocus. But the tips are very fine. So you want to make sure you don't press down so hard you bend it or make it sort of splay out, right? So to make it a thicker line, you could just go a little bit slower. You could go over it again, but more or less it's just going a little bit slower. Zero three. And then a fairly normal line, a fairly light line. Oops a little too light, and then a slower, thicker line. Oops, maybe over it twice. And then we have our 08, which starts to look dramatically thicker than the other two, and sort of normal. Oops, I put my thick one up top. Maybe we'll go lighter, and we'll go with a slightly thicker one. Just go a little bit slower down here. So now you have some sense of what that weight looks like. Uh, you may also be uh, doing this at the start of a second video that Ms. Ms. Hertrick has done and uh, will, you will get to later. So now that we have some sense of what the pens do, let's talk about hatching and cross-hatching and stippling. Uh, I'm going to go with sort of a middle of the road. You could go with the 01 or the 03. I'm going to go with the 03 to start here. Just like we started with a bit of a definition up in your value scale for a straight line, Let's do a couple of these down here. And I think we can probably just do a couple like that. And we can block them off. Do, do, do. A little gap in between there, there, and there. Okay. So we're just going to do a sort of gradation. So we're going to do something called hatching. And we're going to do cross hatching. And we're going to do stippling. And we'll see what else we do with this. Maybe we'll have some fun with that later. Okay, so hatching is really about creating a series of lines uh, that are straight and equal distance apart. Uh, you usually use hatching to also create the surface uh, that you are drawing. So you, your lines should go with the contour of the object or they can be straight uh, and they will create a plane within that. Um, the hatching that is closer together uh, will be darker. So if we start, and we start with something fairly wide open, right? We start with some hatching. And then if we start to fill that in, uh, so this is going to be our like closer to white end, obviously I didn't leave white exactly. But we can start maybe a couple in and then go ahead and add 
lines in between. Right. And then you can think about adding, I'll go a couple bit more, a couple more, and start to double that up again. So every little bit, you're going to start doubling the number of lines of hatching that you have in an area, roughly. Right. And then we go a little bit farther in and we add yet another layer. Oop. Lighting issues. And you can see my pen is not particularly happy with me. I may have to go a little bit slower with my hatching. And that will also make the line a little bit darker if I go a little bit slower. Okay, and you can see how we're starting to have a bit of an ombre effect. So I have sort of a white area and then a light area, and this is getting a little bit darker. And then let's see how many like variations of this I can do along here, but we're gonna try and do it in that nice gradual as even as possible approach. So let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's start to add another layer in here. Now, one of the things that we will notice here is that uh, the line weight is all fairly similar, right? Because it's just one pen. Now, if I wanted to make that a little bit darker at this point, that was my, oh, because that was my 003. No wonder it was so light. I should go in with a heavier pen. There's my 01 that I wanted to be using. And I can start to add some heavier lines along the way. So you can do this with different pens and add additional weight. But you'll notice that with hatching, all of my lines are going the same direction. Zero, three, there we go. Now we can really, again, I'm skipping the next little bit that's a little bit darker and going in here. all the way across, and then I can add another layer. Back a little bit. And then I can go, I've gone up, that was my zero 03, and now I can go to my zero 08 and add a bit with that, and then maybe at the back end, go in and make those zero eights really close together. It's still not solid. It's still hatching. We still have texture. You can still see the spaces in there, right? And it's all going one direction. It's not back and forth, right? So it's not this. There's no zigzaggy, right? The ends are all starting on one side, going to the other. Start on one side, go to the other. There's no back. Okay, so try that. Then we're going to try cross hatching, similar concept. I'm gonna do this with my, pick the right pen, 03. Again, you could pick, pick any of them. Um, similar concept with cross hatching. Um, let me do actually, huh, think this all the way through. Um, you can think about cross hatching similarly Right, and then, but then we're gonna go back the other direction. So leave nice big spaces at the light end. And you can see how those are crossed. Now you can pick any direction. This way and this way is also cross hatching. You can do your diagonals. That way, they're usually uh, perpendicular, right? Uh, and then we can go in and we can start to add another layer. Here's the thing, to get this even darker, we can start to go across in yet another direction. And then depending on how close those lines are to each other, it will have a certain amount of density. And then maybe we can pick yet another direction that's slightly off from those. 
So multi-directional cross hatching. Let's see if we can go back this way. Maybe we can have some going this way. And maybe let's see if I can get this way. And you can see how with every layer that we do, it gets a little bit darker. Right? So here we have cross hatching creating that gradation, that ombre going from super light, again, as wide open as it needs to be. And even this has, you could have this be even a little bit more open with larger spaces that would be a little bit lighter. Okay, so hatching, cross hatching, stippling, same thing, be really careful about the end of your pen. Uh, depending on what you're doing, I'm gonna do some stippling down here and do, 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 right? Polka dotties, this might end up, this is gonna be end up being my darker end of things. Stippling always takes patience and uh, maybe not my strong suit <laughs> um, to get the super dark stippling. So all of that. And we want to let the stippling, you, you, in the super dark parts, you'll be able to have it overlap. But sort of as you come out, you'll have a little more spaces and you don't want it to um, necessarily be all lined up. So if you can have it feel a little bit random and then as it starts to open up and be a little bit lighter. All right, make bigger spaces with your dots. Doot, 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 doot. And again, that's the largest pen I have. I'll go back in with this a little bit more down here in a bit. But on the light end, you might then go to one of the smaller pens, maybe a zero one, and you could have even and you'll see like in here, if I do this with smaller dots, it still has texture, but the dots are lighter, right? You can barely see these little guys. Um, so this is easier for the video to sort of see how you might spread that out, but you can have even lighter qualities with a smaller pen tip. Um, and then it really is just a matter of how gradual can you bring it from that light to something a little bit darker going in and adding in to make it a little bit darker as it goes and then having tons of patience to do the super dark end with the stippling. And this is, they are dots. Again, be careful with the pen tip. They're not lines. They're not little hash marks because you could have cross hatching with littler marks. But this stippling, Dun, 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 dun. There is no fast way to do this because once you get, if you go too fast, you end up with these little lines and that's not really what you want either. You really do want the dots. Okay, so I think we get the idea and you can see I left a little gap between my, uh, my tonal ranges. So let's see what we can do with these three uh, different approaches to using a pen. And the fourth one, let's do, um, on the fourth one, let's do scumbling, which is sort of that, the curly cue, right, of texture. So we've got this kind of thing, and then how open, and again, ask yourself, what pen tip am I using? And might a lighter one give me a little better transition to something a little bit lighter, right? And even then, I got a little dark there, but down here, we can go back with the, the big pen and fill that in even more to get even darker, a little more gradation with our swirls, right? Carry that out just a squidge because it's about that uh, gradual transition. And then I sort of got super light, super fast. Dope. Zero one. I'm going to go in here just a little bit, add a little more 
in that mid-range and maybe a little bit in that transition from the 08 to the 01 and 03 areas. So see how that works too. And that'll give you a third one that you can work with. And these are all like verified techniques. I know this feels like scribbling. <laughs> Um, and that's another, uh, somebody might call it that as well, but it's, if you can control it to create your value scale, it makes a really interesting texture because these will give you some texture uh, with your pen and control of your pen while you're drawing. Yay. Give it a shot. Try this. Uh, and we will have a second video for you with value uh, for the next class. And we'll have a second video for you with value and pen and ink in the very near future. And we'll have a second video for you with value and pen and ink in the very near future.